What up, you two? It's your boy Banks. And we back in the building, you feel me? It's True Talks. Cause True Talks, all right? Let's get straight right into it. So you already know, man, basically, uh, the other night on MLK Day was definitely a big game. It was the Bucks facing the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets on, were on, were at home. And Kevin Durant and James Harden were basically having their, you know, part two, you know, their game number two together as a duo until Kyrie comes back. It has been obviously announced and it is official that Kyrie has basically said that he's coming back on Wednesday versus the Cavs. We'll talk about more of that later. But basically, you know, the other night, Monday, you know, James Harden and Katie were having basically uh, a duo basic facing Giannis and Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday as a trio. So that's something that obviously is going to be like, okay, you know what? Let's test these two out. Let's test James Harden. Let's test Kevin Durant. Let's see if it's cap or if, or is it fact? You get what I'm saying? And we already know it's been fact. If you, bruh, like, anyways, I'm going to keep going. But basically, like, <sighs> Obviously, media was saying it's the magic, it's the magic. But now they're gonna say it's the box, it's the but like, come on now. Y'all have to understand it. This is what elite looks like at the end of the day. Like, before I even go into how people have been bamboozled or been living into this media, they've been plugged into the matrix, you know what I'm saying? And I'm here to save it, you get what I'm saying? But basically to let you out. Because at the end of the day, people look at what James Harden has been, like I've always said, situational. The band is just about a situation. Situational, you know, brings different things. Everything is situational. KYP, know your personnel. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, I guess a lot of these, a lot of these people who love me, they obviously are. Let's be real, LeBron fans. And LeBron looks the way he looks here and here and here is exactly the same. So I can understand why from their end, it's hard for them to envision something completely different, right? Because they just see a player like this, player like this player like this play that's what they're used to you know that's what they think everything is but lebron let's be honest lebron isn't a multifaceted skilled arsenal offensively type of player you know what i'm saying he isn't he's more so a one dimensional player he could all, he's more so like a better version of giannis in terms of you know how he how he moves better version of giannis better version of zion you know what i'm saying all of that type of stuff and then basically the version of lebron that LeBron, the new 2.0 LeBron, if you actually pay attention to it, which I'll probably do a video on it later, is more so the Luka and the Harden. The Harden is actually the top tier version of what the LeBron play style is. And people are going to be, oh my God, what are you talking about? They're not going to understand. That triple double, I get rebounds, the ball's in my hand and I play make and do everything, but I could also score. James Harden is the top tier version of what LeBron, actually the blueprint LeBron laid out. And if you actually understand what I'm talking about, or if you know, you know, then you will know. You get what I'm saying? Because Harden is basically that guy. Harden averages 36. You know, LeBron has never touched that. Harden makes all his free throws. LeBron never touches that. You know what I'm saying? Harden at any time, obviously he hasn't, when he was in Houston, he was doing no mid-range mainly. He was doing, not the whole time in Houston, but the end part with Dan Tony. He was doing threes and layups. LeBron struggles with his threes. He'll hit it when he's hot and here and there, but mainly paint, 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 paint. You know what I'm saying? And Harden is paint, 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 paint. Draw free throws, paint, 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 paint. You know what I'm saying? Floater, all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, the step back three is unguardable. He actually has a three-point move. So he is the better version in LeBron's play style because LeBron doesn't do bare mid-range. LeBron is threes here and there, very small, but he'll shoot the three. You know what I'm saying? He can hit it and he'll go up abuse in the paint. Harden abuse in the paint, but he actually is way better at the threes and carried his own three. So he's the the play style that LeBron actually plays that he transformed into because he always wasn't this when he first came into the league, but he transformed into that player. Harden is actually the 2.0 version of that. And y'all won't. I know a lot of y'all are going to be, oh, my God, LeBron's the best and whatever the case is, all that type of stuff. Rightfully so. Obviously, when it matters, Harden isn't to that caliber and LeBron actually rises his play way higher than what Harden actually does. We get that. But I'm just talking about overall in every single game, regular season, no matter what. If you just look at the skill set that is presented to you, Harden is the 2.0 version of that because you can't erase 
the points per game that he's doing. At the end of the day, LeBron finally last year only uh, for the first time averaged the most assists in the NBA. Harden been doing this and been flirting. You know what I'm saying? Like this is like. Harden is literally the two. He almost averaged a triple double with almost 36, 35 points. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Harden is like I said, the two point version. But anyways, let's let's go past that because I know a lot of y'all won't understand. But if you know, you know, when you hear me and you actually just take away your biases and you just listen to what I'm saying to you, you know what I'm saying? And you actually analyze the actual things that are being presented. You will understand that. OK, you know what? It's actually not cap. It's actually fact. You know what I'm saying? Because. If you look at LeBron out of his 10 shots, eight is in the paint. If you look at Harden out of his 10 shots, sometimes it's 10 threes. Sometimes it's 10 layups. You don't, you, you know, you never know. And that's part of the reason why he's unguardable. And a lot of the reason why he averages high points. Not only that, when he gets fouled, he actually, he could draw fouls OD, which is he more finesses in his fouls more than LeBron, obviously. But even then, not only that, he makes his free throws at a high, high, high rate. High rate. So that even now adds to his average. So he's just basically a top tier version and everything that LeBron is. You know what I'm saying? A 2.0 version. Sorry. So and Luca's trying to be that as well, too. But he's been struggling with his three. But if you look at their play styles, it's literally the same. Like Luca literally is an image of what of what Harden is. Same slow, methodic rate. You know what I'm saying? But then quick speed, quick burst angles, blow by. You know why? Still unguardable, shifty. Uh, he might do the step back. I don't know. Go by. You know what I'm saying? Floaters, a lot of floaters, dimes, alleys. You know what I'm saying? Not that much mid range. Th that's the same play style. And Harden is just the best version. Luca's a bit under, and then LeBron's a bit under because his playmaking is better than all of them. But this actual averages in terms of playmaking hasn't been higher than Harden's and Luca's in terms of their whole career. Obviously, right? If you go look at the average of LeBron's whole career, it just last year it was higher. But anyways, let's now move off of that because that's not the whole point of this video. But that's just to understand that this Harden. Harden has been elite like this. Harden has been this guy. The problem with Harden was obviously being the number one option, being the focal point, being that guy. Now you could get double, like literally even versus the Lakers in the bubble, he was just getting doubled OD and he had a Westbrook off ball. And it's like, what can he really do? That one I didn't really blame him for. Obviously, I blamed him more so for the Golden State, especially without KD. Then the Golden State, even when KD was there and he was missing and bricking and he won't adjust his game to just take mid range and he won't step up in those moments. He'll start passing to a reason. All those guys have to create and do even dribble pull ups like they have to create in the bag, right? That they didn't have to do. This was a spot up. So Larden will, you know, decrease his level of play, you know, in terms of efficiency, in terms of everything, right? Obviously, some series he's still average bear. But overall, when you look at the eye test, he wasn't the same the way he looked, the bounce to the step. He's not the same Harden that you see in regular season that he will be in the playoffs, which now led to playoff, miss, uh, playoff mishaps and all those type of things. So obviously, no one's saying that James Harden isn't that tier, tier, tier guy. I know when it matters, he hasn't been, but that's why he should thrive in this type of situation. He's going to be a better version of the OKC Harden, way better version, 10 times better. Like he said, no one reads, no one, all these type of things. So when you look at it, he's obviously achieved the less, the least out of all the three, right? Kyrie and KD. So he obviously, you know what I mean? That this is a perfect situation for him. He doesn't have to get doubled or he can get doubled. Look who's there. You know what I'm saying? He can get double so he can even eat more. He gets shift more like you've seen him cook against Pat Connaughton and all of them. But anyways, before, you know, or sorry, let's go into everything that was happening just in the Bucks game. And then I'll translate that to just what, every, what media is saying. And just to debunk a lot of the shit that they're saying, because you're here for that IQ. That's what I do. So let's go into that context because I give it that context. Let's, we're going to talk about Katie, everybody. All right. So let's go into that real quick. So basically, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do the full, full breakdown again. You're going to see the videos and it's going to come up. And whatever I'm talking about is going to be highlighted at the same time. You know what I'm saying? You already know they're going to put me in the corner because I can play off ball. You feel me? <laughs> Let him know. But what I'm saying is basically, you know, Harden is someone when they say it's not going to work and they say ball. Oh, my God, this ball dominant. How's it going to work? And this with all that type of stuff. Like I said. These players who are multifaceted players and have multiple skill sets, because remember, don't just because Harden hasn't been that OKC player off the bench does not mean it left him. It's just like they say, your brought to see your upbringing like it doesn't leave you just because you get rich. It's still there. You still have those values. You know what I'm saying you might decide not to use it. That's on you, but it's still there. It doesn't go away. You know what I'm saying it doesn't go away. It's still there. If you remember the time, you'll forget flashback. You get slapped back to reality all one, two time. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't leave. So when you look at it from that perspective, 
Harden still he if you look at his like his footages, he's played off ball. If you look at the film, he's played off ball. He's come off down screen. He's done those things in OKC. Not only that, when he got to Houston the first time, he's come off screens. He's done mid range. He's posted up. He's done. You know, he's eaten in that way. But like I said, he's played out of that play style due to necessity. They come with a whole new offense, Maury. You know, Dan Tony, all that type of stuff, and he's running the offense to their best. Uh, abilities that they to the best of his abilities that they basically give him so he's like you know what i'm gonna do this what they're saying but i'm gonna do it my way and that's what he basically did so you can't look at that harden and expect that to be the same harden when he knows coming in before he even touches the ball there's katie there's Kyrie. like he's not going to be the same harden and that's what you saw even with him just with him with, with KD. you know what i'm saying you've seen him like you'll see the footage play up now basically you'll see him come off the ball, right? You'll see him come off the ball. There's plays he came off the ball. There's plays he uh, played off the ball. There's plays he played in the corner. There's plays he was just diamond guys. You know what I'm saying? There's plays where, you know, he even was doing catch and shoot. You know what I'm saying? Like Harden has done a lot of these things, even in just this one game with the Bucks, with KD. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look at it like he's obviously willing to play off ball. Obviously, because there's no Kyrie, he's more so bought into the playmaker. And that kind of, I guess, affects Kyrie because he's not there you see how elite they look with even hard and ball handling and playmaking and doing all that type of stuff and that's why you know that is no accident that KD got 40 when he for when he first came doesn't mean he wouldn't have got 40 with Kyrie because again Kyrie and KD even together was elite don't get it twisted but there is times where Kyrie goes more into his ISO bag but it is it's the same thing with Harden he goes into his ISO bag so just because it, it led to 14 assists you know what I'm saying? And one has had maybe 10 assists or eight or six or whatever the case is. Does not mean that the, the man is not willing to pass. Kyrie's not willing to pass. Harden is a better vision playmaker type of guy. Kyrie has vision, but at the end of the day, his bag is score first, everything else second. He still will playmake. It doesn't mean he won't playmake. You know what I'm saying? This is the same thing. Like you see Curry, you see um um Dame, you see that type of stuff. But Harden actually is like, he has been playmaking and doing this for a long time. Kyrie has been hasn't been doing that everywhere he's gone especially once he left LeBron like when he went to Boston Kyrie has had to score a lot and then when he doesn't have it he'll still play making all that type of stuff but when he doesn't have it everyone is scores and those guys aren't just catching and shooting so he'll go to the corner Brown will go in his bag Tatum will go in his bag Rozier will go in his bag you know what I'm saying Hayward will go in his bag he actually lets man's eat but he'll play make sometimes and when I there's like, OK, I'm going to go into this game playmaking. But even then, the team he's on is not like they're shooters on that type catch and shoot and, and then give it to me. If you don't have it, catch and shoot. Give it to me if you don't have it, that type of stuff. He hasn't played with a personnel like that. You know what I'm saying? Because even when he first came to the Nets, you had Karis LeVert, you had Dinwiddie. They're not catch and shoot, just catch and shoot guys there. It's the same similar to Boston type of play style where he's playing. He's always played with a lot of guards. Harden doesn't play with that. And when he comes to the Nets, <laughs> All the other guards, again, is more so catch and shoot. If not, here, take it. So it's going to result in assists. You know what I'm saying? Kyrie, obviously, you know, is like I said, he's still learning his playmaking abilities in terms of those things. You'll see him willing at times and not. You know what I'm saying? So you got you to gotta understand that that's a different echelon and a different context behind the Kyrie playmaking, you know, oh, who plotted everyone says he don't pass and all that type of stuff, which is cap because. Every person that's in their bag, ISOs. Even LeBron, ISOs and holds the ball. Like, every man does that. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, let's go past that. But, like, what I'm saying, Harden coming into this play style, you've seen multiple things from him that show you that this guy can play with KD or he could play with a trio. These signs and these things of, oh, my God, Kyrie's going to break the rhythm. People don't, it's like, it's like, this is what I have trouble, right? And this is what the problem is. It's like, Y'all witnessed a Steph, a Clay, and a KD trio work. A trio, all average 20 plus. Y'all seen that. You know what I'm saying? And that's with Clay even being more limited, which does benefit in a trio situation because he doesn't ISO OD, but he still can, but he doesn't ISO OD like that, all that type of stuff, right? So that obviously benefits. But at the end of the day, they had a system, they had ball movement, they had flow. If you look at the Houston, the Nets, they have ball movement. They have flow. They still have Joe Harris moving like he's clay, moving nonstop, all that type of stuff. You still see man's literally dribble it. If they don't have it within five, five seconds, six seconds, you see them pass. They don't just dribble for seven seconds. Like even Harden doesn't dribble for all that time. Kyrie also wasn't even dribbling for all that time. He'll dribble, try and get his take. Ah, 
He'll shoot it, and it's quick offense. So no, a lot of times he'll come up, <coughs> shoot it, and it misses. Next time, <coughs> dying, swing, swing, swing. You know what I'm saying? They've, it's been like that all year. If you actually pay attention, that's why they're, what, the number one offensive team right now in terms of scoring? There's a reason for that. You can't be a number one offensive team from just all ISOs. Right. So it's like people aren't even paying attention to what's going on because they only see the highlights where he's just ISO in that situation. I watch every single minute of all their games, every single one. I don't do breakdowns on it because obviously it hasn't been requested like that. But now with this big news happening, I probably will do be more, more be doing more of those. I've obviously been focusing on Raptors and more so Clippers. Obviously, Clippers been a minute, but we'll get back to those, too. But anyways, like I said, there's been ball movement. There's been all that type of play. So you understand you have Nash, who is a, cere- or a cerebral PG mind you get what i'm saying and you have dan tony who's a great offensive mind as well too so you have both of them so you already knew it was gonna be up tempo ball movement all that type of stuff you already knew that you already knew that right so when you look at it from that perspective harden and Kyrie, people thinking it's not gonna work i get their reservations at first but you have to break your mind away from the isolation of what you've seen from these guys in terms of I've seen Kyrie, I've seen this Kyrie, I've seen this Harden. We already know KD can play with everyone. I don't know why Charles Barkley be saying KD's a volume shooter. That's fucking cap. That's cap. Cap tackler. That's straight cap. What do you mean? A volume shooter. Come on now. KD a volume shooter? My goodness. Anyways, I'm not even going to that. I mean, if you say, man, 54% from the field. Volume shooter? KD? 42 on how many shots? <laughs> What was it? What was he? Uh, 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 I don't even know what he was. I, what was it? 16 for 26, 42 on 26 shots or whatever he was. Bro, y'all can't be serious, man. Anyways, and he's averaging only 19 shots. He's averaging 30 right now. Just take it. He's averaging 31 points per game because it's 30 point, what, 7, 6, 31. He's averaging 31 points per game, 54% from the field, <laughs> 48% from three. What is it? 87% from the free throw line. So he's almost 50, 50, 50. He's almost 50, 50, 90. He's almost 50, 50, 90. Okay. Not 50, 40, 90. 50, 50, 90. 55, 50, 90. He's, almost, he's basically that on 31. Because most people do that on pinch, you know, smaller, smaller points per game. 30. And he's only, he's averaging 31 on 19 shots per game. <laughs> Off an Achilles in his first 11 games. Like, are y'all, like, are y'all serious right now? And y'all think that that man's a volume shooter? That man is not the best player in the league. Like, I'm not even going to get into that. But anyways, like I'm saying, like I was saying, if you look, these guys all have different types of games that you've seen and you're used to. But coming together, you know your personnel and you're going to adjust. And you have when you're not limited, you have different bags. KD could literally still average 30 if all he did was catch and shoot. Catch and shoot. And then at worst, catch and shoot, pump, pump, one dribble, pull up. If all he did was catch and shoot, he could average 30. If all he did was post up, he could average 30. If all he did was bring up the ball and play like LeBron and James Harden and all those guys and where he's just, he's bringing the ball and he's ball dominant, he could average 30. He can average 30 in any type of way he plays. So that addresses KD. All right? Kyrie, the same thing. Kyrie could average 30 in the same thing. Kyrie could even post up. Kyrie could play off the ball. Kyrie could just catch and shoot. And then re- off the catch and shoot, read, pump, fake, one dribble, pull up, that's it. Three seconds, he gets the ball, make a move. He could do the Clay Thompson shit. Like these guys can play off the ball. They come off down screens. They, you know what I mean? They run pick and roll. They run PNR. Every man has no limitations to their game. The only one that might have a limitation to their game that you might say based off what you saw was Harden. He don't catch and shoot enough and he don't be doing mid range. But as I just showed you in footage, he did catch and shoot. He's not used to it. This is why you're hearing him say, I got to get my point guard skills back. He's got to get certain things back that he hasn't been doing. That's to break out of those habits. But the fact that he already showed in one game, in two games, he showed willingness to do those things and showed ability to, even if it missed, the fact that he did it is something he didn't do in Houston at all. The man was at half court. So that already shows you there is different bags. There is a mentality and a mindset shift. When my mindset is focused on or geared towards thinking, you know what, we have nobody, I have to do this. So you play that way based off of your personnel that told you that's what you have to do and your personnel that basically led you to that's what you have to do. But now when you know, okay, Kate, we can all do everything, just play. Look at what he's doing. That's just playing. No practice, nothing. Triple-double debut, 34 again the next day, 12 assists or whatever he got. And you can see it's literally just ability. Just wake up, get buckets. And it's still fast pace. Like, you can't be holding the ball and be scoring that much. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. 
Now, we'll talk about the negatives with the Nets and all of that, whatever the case. But I'm just talking about, I'm just breaking and debunking this theory and this Fugazi narrative that is, it won't work. Kyrie is Fugazi. And even what they're also saying with all that other stuff. But I'm going to go in. To that, I'm gonna go into that a bit later. But when we just dissect what happened with the Bucks, and you look at it, look at what, look how they moved down the stretch. Just those two: KD bucket, a Harden bucket. You know what I'm saying? A KD bucket, a Harden bucket, a Harden Harden bucket. Oh, Joe Harris, they're sleeping. Like you're looking at the buckets. Look at how they just scored them with ease, with ease and fast pace. And then when it's time, you like look at the ability with Katie. And when it's time, you know what I'm saying? Katie was shifty and he was ready, but ah, he slipped a little bit. But look at the closing. Harden miss, get rebound, kick out. Katie's right there. Like, this is without Kyrie. Like, what how like look how easy it was. Look how easy it felt for the Nets to score. Versus when you looked at Bucks, you're like, what are they gonna run? Obviously, it was more so easy because DeAndre was playing drop coverage and Middleton was pulling like he was KD, which is why you've seen them dap after the game. Like, I, I see you, boy, because Middleton was in KD's bag. Off the screen, one dribble, pull up, all that type of stuff, and KD was cheese. DeAndre, pick up. What are you doing? He's just pulling in the gaps in the middies, and that's what a lead is. But the fact that Middleton has to be your closer, how many game winners have we actually seen Middleton get? I think maybe like three. Doesn't mean he can't do it, but like, in a seven game series, almost every other game, like he's going to, and you don't have to get a game winner, but like just big shots, big clutch shots, one minute left, tie game, five minutes left, down five, five minutes, left, even down 10 spark or run, like consecutive buckets, like all that type of stuff. It pans out throughout the whole game. Like, are you trusting Middleton to just take over like that? Are you trusting Drew to just take over like that? And I've seen him do it before in Pelicans, but in big games, Drew hasn't been there enough for me to be, be like, okay, that's him. And we already know what Giannis is. Like, Giannis is just going to screen roll and whatever. Like, he's not, he didn't even touch the ball like that. Off a putback one take, like, look at the takes Middleton did for his game winners. Like, that's what that, like, look what the East has as closers. The only other team that has elite closers or, like, is would be the Celtics in a big three type of closer. Jalen Brown can get a bucket. Tatum can get a bucket. Kemba can get a bucket. Every other team, I don't trust them. Even Embiid, I don't trust them. Y'all talk about Embiid. When has Embiid closed what? Closed what? Do we even close the door when he walks in? What cl what closing has he done? Simmons close? Like everyone's so high on Philly like, as if like they've done anything. They only done something when Butler was there because they had a closer. Tobias is going to be your closer and Tobias can close here and there. But is that your guy like a superstar closer? Really? I don't believe in that. I like I've I don't people like that's it just like media, the way they just push these narratives, like it's just negative IQ. Like it's negative IQ. You have proven people who closed finals games that y'all were in awe of and y'all disrespect them. And I feel he's coming out. The like, and like, are you serious right now? And play like the games you see in regular season and the game. How many times do y'all have to learn? Just look at the Bucks, the top tier team, MVP, two straight years. And you exit conference finals, and the next year you even go earlier than that. Almost getting swept by the Heat in the second round. Are y'all that you have to make major? You have to get a trio now. You have to shift everything and get a trio. Like, and y'all don't see that it's clearly that there's two different seasons. How could a team be consistently elite, but then look fugazi in the playoffs? It's two different seasons. It's about matchups. We game plan. Everything is tight. Palms are sweaty as nerves. We cut off. We know that play. We know when they call high, when they call white, when they call black. We know exactly what it's going to be. They're scouting. Like, we don't study you. We don't fault nobody else. We study you seven games. Breathe, eat, sleep with just all just your film. And y'all going to act like someone who has, has no offense or who is not elite is just going to get buckets in those tight situations when pump everything's cut off no play screen don't work all that like it comes to ice so i might go psycho that's why the scores the shot creators are always the most important people in the playoffs and they're the ones who carry and put the team on my back very it can get scary you feel me like come on now y'all anyways i digressed my fault but if you look at that last the final mo moments in that game, you could see, like I said, with all the ability of the Nets and the potential that the Nets have, and you've seen it, and that's just with Katie and Harden. 
So I know y'all are looking at Kyrie as a negative instead of a positive. Y'all are looking at Kyrie as if this trio can't do what the Golden State trio did in terms of ability. When you have multiple abilities, you have multiple arsenals. Y'all could do anything. Not only that, not even to mention the fact that y'all are erasing that they can now stagger the lineup. Y'all are forgetting that. If y'all go, if y'all take in Golden State, like I'm going to give y'all IQ because a lot of y'all don't pay attention to rotations and minutes and stack because those matter. When a guy comes out, if I'm, let's say, like Golden State, it's Katie first, Steph, then Clay, right? But they made a focal point that they'll always try and feed Clay to sometimes start the game, whatever the case is. But let's say that's the hierarchy, right, with Golden State. Or in case they they go Steph, when that's cut off, then KD, then Clay, right? That's their hierarchy with Golden State. Clay comes out first. He comes out after, like, around the seven-minute, six-minute mark, right? He plays five minutes straight, comes out, right? Sean Livingston comes in. Now that, obviously, Clay's out of the picture, now the focal point becomes KD, and Steph. Then KD comes out sec. He comes out like two minutes left or whatever the case is. And then Steph is now the focal point for the rest of the quarter. So every man is. And then now when they bring, come back to start the second, Clay comes back in with KD or whatever the case is. And then now it's like KD and then hierarchy Clay. So every man, every man will have their moment where they become the focal point or at least a second guy. They'll have moments where they can just eat. And people don't pay attention to those things. When you stagger the lineup like that, it's harder to stagger the lineup. I understand sometimes when you have a duo, you don't really stagger sometimes, especially coming off injury. They didn't stagger them all the time. You started to stagger Katie and Kyrie, but he didn't stagger them all the time. You see sometimes with duels, even like Doc Rivers last year, wasn't staggering, you know, Kawhi and Paul George. You'll have them both off. What that what staggering means is one isn't at all time. You stagger. They're together, and then one comes out, one stays. One comes back, one comes out. Then they both come back, so you always have two or one in at all times. Always. And that's what staggering the lineup is. You don't just take both out, and then there's nobody, and it's just hard to find offense, right? And the, what the benefit of doing that is, at one point of time, they're going to be able to eat like it's just them on the court. So that's going to help going further down to the fourth quarter and the times where you need that guy hot, you need him having rhythm, which is why you could see, oh, my God, how can – Three guys have 30 in a game. This is the reason why it happens like that. Because y'all don't apply context. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at it from that perspective, like I was saying, you can stagger the lineup. So there's going to be times where Harden is out. Kyrie's the main point guard. And this, you got to understand, Katie, this is what they, this is, so let me explain it like this with this trio. And this is why the trio with Steph and them worked, right? This, that trio is naturally going to work because of how they play the play style they play, and the fact that it's one point guard, one shooting guard, one power forward. So they don't step on each other's toes, right? Clay's not just coming up, nah, nah, nah. you know what I mean? KD, sometimes he'll come up, nah, 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 but mainly transition off rebound. He's not just coming up, you know what I mean? He'll come off a downswing, catch post face up, you know? Like, he gets, he cooks in, like, split, like, quick decisions. Get it? <coughs> bucket. Get it? <coughs> face up. Bucket. Get it. It's like he's so elite that he scores within the flow, and that's what he prides himself on doing. You didn't always do that, but he when he played with Westbrook, he didn't look at it and sulk his teeth and kiss his teeth like, damn, I can't play with this guy. I need to change it. I need the ball. I need the ball. I need the ball. He worked on his game within the weaknesses of, you know what I'm saying? Within the weaknesses of Westbrook, we, even around him. Westbrook can't shoot. Westbrook can't really play off ball. They're going to double off Westbrook. They're going to pinch off Westbrook. They're going to pinch off Roberson. They're going to help off Cep oh, Cephalosha. All that type of stuff. He's finding ways. He's like, you know what? Let me shorten my dribbles. Let me shorten this. Let me cook and score in three seconds, five seconds. Let me score in bad situations. Just be in these situations often and find a way to thrive in that. So my ability is going to be potent. And that actually helped him in Golden State. Because if he came as a different completely guy in Golden State where he's just he has to always have the ball, that's going to affect them. They're a ball movement offense. So that's why he just seamlessly just went through because he was working on that when he was with OKC. If you actually pay attention. Westbrook was doing all the decision making. Katie before with ball handle and then and then and then he but he just catch and shoot, catch, dribble, bucket, okay, swing out Westbrook, <laughs> bucket. And you know what I mean? He's getting quick decisions, quick, 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 quick. I don't have time to waste because if they set and they just double me and help like trap, no. And then what happened when Westbrook got injured in his MVP year? You seen him ball handle, you seen him play make, you seen him do everything, and he showed you a different ability and a different side to him. Hence the MVP. So. That's what that just shows you different 
play styles warrant are warranted based off the personnel. But like I said, this is a situation where the duo isn't the problem in everyone's eyes. It's the trio, which is understood. But if you actually pay attention to why I say staggering is so important, right, with Kyrie and Harden, one of them is going to be point guard when one of them is out. So what ha what that means is the duo isn't the issue, right? The duo isn't the issue. The issue is a trio, right? That's what people are saying. So even if let's say that is correct, which I don't believe because of the ability, but let's say that is correct. When you stagger the minutes, so Katie comes, let's say Katie comes out first. Now you, or sorry, Harden comes out first. It's Katie and Kyrie back to a duo. And Katie doesn't ball handle. So you're now ball handling, right? Uh, K uh Katie comes out, right? Uh, what's it called? Or Kyrie comes out and Katie's still there or whatever the case is. Now you have Harden replace Kyrie. Now it's Harden and Katie ball handling. So you're still a duo within the trio depending on the minutes. And you're only a trio for the first five, the last five. Do you get what I'm saying? Or the first seven, the last seven. First seven for of the first seven minutes of the first quarter, you're a trio. The first the last seven minutes of the first half, you're a trio. The first seven minutes of the third quarter, you're a trio. The last seven minutes of the first quarter, you're you know what I mean? You're a trio. Or last five, whatever, six minutes. But other than that, it's duo at times, because it's not all three in, which is a whole lot of minutes. What did I mention? Seven, seven, that's 14. Under the first 24, that's you have 20 minutes off. Let's say it's seven or let's say seven minutes to start the first seven minutes to end the, the thing, the half. That's 14 each half. That's 28 minutes. You know what I'm saying? So that means 20 minutes out of the 48, you're going to have du duo staggering. And during those 20 minutes, <laughs> those guys can eat <laughs> like so how would like just just taking the breakdown I just gave you, which is IQ. That's what I do. Those guys can eat and that's what you're going to see happen. And that's where coaching comes to play. Coaching for me matters and the rotational handling, all that type of stuff. And obviously the sets and the plays, but obviously it's freedom. Men's move how they move because they're elite. But the, the most important thing for coaching is the motivational part, the schemes in terms of like just game plan wise. Okay, Katie, this is how we're going to cover this guy. It's like just that, those type of things and rotations. Rotations is so important. How you, it's so, people don't, people underestimate or don't talk about it enough. Rotations literally makes or breaks a game. So that's it's a set rotation and on the fly adjustment, rotation, subs, and all that. that like, like, that's literally for me, like the biggest part of quote that I pay attention to that impacts the game the most. Obviously, the behind the scenes, like I said, schemes and all that stuff, schemes and all that is important. But like the rotate, like you taking out this guy and his impact he does, this guy to match up with this guy, like, rotation and has all of that involved involved even rotations if anything has even schemes involved because based off the rotation based off the person that's on the floor there's a certain scheme you could play you know what i'm saying like all of that all of that goes hand in hand and it, a, a rotations determine what's even being used you know what i'm saying so when you look at it from that perspective that's why i say again there's going to be 20 minutes 20, 20 to 24 minutes around there, 20, 22, 24, right? Where there's no trio, where it's a duo. At worst, a single. Because let's say you start, you put Katie in, there's, the trio starts, right? Uh, uh, Harden comes out first, Katie and Kyrie, right? Katie and Kyrie are playing, the two or the two, the Katie and Kyrie are playing, right? And then, uh, um, then now you take out Katie, or you take out Katie and Kyrie, put back Harden. Harden starts, right? You insert Katie a bit earlier, take out the Harden. Kyrie comes back to duo, and then now they, and then Harden comes back to end the court. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And so you're like, so you're going to be seeing, regardless, Kyrie and Harden are going to be sharing ball handling duties when they're not together. When they're together, obviously, that's where it's like, okay, it might be an issue, but that's where you have to understand the context. If a guy in his mind knows, okay, when Harden's not on the floor, I can get in my bag and ball handle OD. I'm not mad if let's say Harden is playmaking OD while I while we have three of us together because that's not going to be the whole game. Things like that is what players are cognizant about. They pay attention to, they're attentive to. So it now changes how the reaction would be to the way they have to play in certain spots. Those are things that matter, right? Those are things, especially that would be more so of a hindrance like let's say a Ben Simmons or Giannis 
a LeBron or those type of guys, a Zion. Like those might hinder them and they might be frustrated with that. And this is why Westbrook was frustrated with that because he can't really play off the ball. And that's why he's like, I want out of here. Chris Paul didn't really care because even though Chris Paul got traded, they emotional was out of here because I guess the beef they had. Because Chris Paul's like, why are you at half court? Stuff you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like heart in terms of Harden. But when when Chris Paul went to OKC, he did the exact same shit he was doing with Harden. He shared ball handling duties with Shooter. Shooter literally was a, a runner up six man of the year with Chris Paul there. How could that happen from a point guard coming off the bench with Shea and with 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 uh with Chris Paul? That's three ball handlers, and it worked to get the fourth seed. Those are guys who were supposed to be three ball dominant guys. Did that did not work. That's three point guards. Take it in. Three point guards worked and got a four seed. And those guys are even more limited catch and shoot. And like skill set in terms of mid range and whatever. They're more limited. Doesn't mean they can't do it, but they're no more limited than the guys I'm talking about in terms of Harden and Tyree. And you're going to tell me a point guard shooting guard can't work because Harden before he was point guard was playing shooting guard. Kyrie played point guard, but he also played shooting guard. <laughs> like, Come on now, that's like CJ and Dane. That we mean that won't work. They're ball dominant, so CJ it doesn't like. Are y'all like this is where it's not the ball. The ball dominant is only a stature when man's can't do nothing else. But when you can do something else, ball dominant, ball dominant don't mean nothing. And that's something that I, I'm here to enlighten man's man. Because at the end of the day, like there's no way they play today. You'll see that it will work. Obviously, it doesn't mean it's going to thrive and it's, it, might, it might not look the greatest in terms of Harden, like how Harden thing came out the gate running. But even then, people said it won't work. And then now Harden's came, coming. Oh, my God, Kyrie's going to be the problem. They always change the narrative every time. They don't address the sh- cap that they just said. The shit cap they just said, they don't address that shit. They just act like they, they thought it was going to work with Harden and Kyrie, Katie. Harden and Katie's not the problem. Y'all said even just Harden alone is going to be a problem. Y'all said Harden, y'all, oh my God, he's fat, out of shape. Like, are y'all serious? And the man looked completely different. <laughs> like, and, but what I was originally, what I was originally saying, these are guys who are, like I said, they're, if they're, if they're coming into a situation where Kyrie, especially Kyrie and Katie, oh, sorry, Kyrie and Harden. Okay. You know what? We'll, we'll one play, two straight plays up the court. Harden comes up. He's the, he's a playmaker. Ah. Then the next two plays, Kyrie comes up. He's the playmaker. Why can't that happen? That literally happens with Damon CJ. And Katie, you already know he's Katie. You don't, you don't need a touch. You don't even need to sniff the ball for five straight plays, and he can just get it <laughs> buckets in time, and then still get the ball rebound on transition. <laughs> Has he? You know what I mean? Like, are y'all serious? Have y'all not watched Kyrie ball handle and then like uh, Joe Harris eat off the screens and he's diming him? Like, are y'all serious? Like, and then for what's it called, Charles and them to act like James Harden is a better one-on-one player than Kyrie, just because Kyrie don't get the average. Just didn't get the averages because he's never been in a situation like Harden has been in. And that's another thing. It's not gonna, I'm not taking away from Harden. But Harden, out of all those three guys, Harden is the more limited player. Don't let the numbers, and this is, I don't, I'm not trying to disrespect Harden because Harden's numbers are reckless. But put Kyrie in that same situation. Put KD in that same situation with no shooters. And it's just me and I do everything. I play make, I get buckets, like I do it all. Kyrie has never been in that situation. And even when people thought maybe Kyrie might have been in that situation before he got injured, the first year with the Nets, 50, 40, like he was snapping. And that's not even in a five out, you know, or just screen, just all you. Man's just catch and shoot. They can't ball handle. They can't create for themselves. It's just you. Only one is Eric Gordon. And even then he catch and shoots more than he just breaks down and cooks. So, like, y'all don't understand the situation that plays a part to the points per game or the way you see the man look. But if you break down the way he is scoring his one-on-one buckets, Kyrie's not doing the same thing every time. KD is not doing the same thing every time. Even though KD can do the same thing every time. Even though Kyrie can do the same thing every time. That's when you could tell who is the better one-on-one guy. And that's why... Th- th- go look at Kyrie's one-on-one buckets in the finals. Are y'all serious? Y'all trying to disrespect... Like, y'all trying to disrespect... And I'm not taking away nothing from Harden. But there's a reason why those two, Ky- Kyrie and Katie, are literally the best two one-on-one players in the NBA. Because they did it on the brightest stage. It's not just regular season. That's why that duo was already looking reckless. Like, y'all can't be serious. <laughs> Bruh. Kyrie, who's on me? Steph, that's cooking money. Easy. Switch. Clay, premium defender. Cook. 
Easy money. Switch. This is a, and he's shorter than all these guys. Eagle Dollar, you switch on me? Cook. Switch. Draymond, you switch on me? Cook. Switch. Livingston, you switch on me? Cook. Switch. Are y'all serious? Draymond, switch on me? Cook. Switch. Y'all double to me? Bank off the, like, bro. Yo, the man, in, like, if you look at his highlights just from the finals, it was never the same take the whole game. The whole, like, this is the finals. Like, I've never seen, or even Kobe did not do Arsenal like that in the finals. Like, that Arsenal like Kyrie did, no one has matched that. The only one who matched that was KD. But it was not looking like, like the tough, the difficulty and the, di the variation of moves. No one has, that was one of the most reckless skill sets I've ever seen in the finals. That's what Kyrie did. And y'all must have forgot. Y'all must have forgot about Harden's a better one-on-one -on -one player. Are y'all serious right now? Man averaged 27 twice in the finals on high efficiency. Like, are, bro, like the way men's forget, man. And you say, oh, LeBron, LeBron, like the ISO buckets. Transition, the, the wrong foot lays. Like, are you serious? Like, come on, like, bro, don't let me get started, man. Like, that's what I'm saying. So when a man has that endless bag, Harden coming in, literally, he should be the one. And he knows. That's why he said it coming in. Everybody knows who Kyrie and KD are. They have rings from just buckets. Like, they, like, come on now. We know what it is. They have clutch moments in the finals. Like, that's something that men's dream of. As a kid in your backyard or wherever you're playing and, you know, every man plays, even on the, the small pinch net in the, with, you know, on the, on the door or whatever you put that shit or a garbage can. That's what every man dreams of. And they did that. They did that as grown men in an elite, the biggest stage. So y'all like try to act like, like, like those two aren't that, that Harden already said. That's why he said, though, everyone knows who those two are. Though, you know what I mean? So I'm coming in. I'm going to really work on my point guard skills and play make. There's a reason why he said that. Because he knows like those guys on ability, like even I don't like I, he knows I don't man, I I can score. Like, I mean, like, but those two guys, like that ability, like who, man's know. if you know, you know, like Hoopers know, like Harden is not. No disrespect to him, but he does his <clears throat> through the legs, through the legs, then his step back, and through the legs, and the hezzy blow by or <clears throat> crossover, <laughs> and it's all off the, the shiftiness. And that's elite already in itself. But it's literally floaters, if you know hers, and euros and paint takes. You know what I'm saying? Draw foul or step back three. He's not doing that much post turn phase of, you know, reverse pivots up and under. I just, you know, one dribble crossover, pull up, you know, has he pull like he's not doing that. Catch and shoe like he doesn't do that. And it doesn't mean he can't, but he hasn't done that for so long. So he knows I have to get acclimated. And if anything, I should just play make for these guys and make it easier for them and for the whole team and basically come in as a PG. And that's been his mindset. It's not been scoring. He just scored out of necessity based off the games, the way it played out. And he still got 34. <laughs> like, bro. So I already know, like, I don't think Kyrie is going to be a problem. I think Ky like Kyrie is going to be Kyrie. You already know, like, this is, this is just uh, what elite looks like. Yeah, I already know it's going to work. Y'all are going to be, y'all are in for a rude awakening. Y'all who think that it's not going to work. Kyrie's a cancer, all this type of stuff, because he came back and said, you know, he was dealing with things and whatever. And look what he's been doing. Like the philanthropy, uh, the philanthropy work he's been doing, like, Come on now, like the social, you know, injustice work he's been doing, buying George House, you know, George Floyd's family a house, all that type of stuff. Like we don't even bring all of that up. Men's are just bashing this guy nonstop and whatever the case is. Like, come on now. Like the only thing I, you know, probably obviously I thought I just thought it was a play. So I apologize even, if you know, to Kyrie to saying that. You know, this might have been a play. I said a part of me. I didn't say, you know, that I believe 100 percent, but I said a part of me just because the way everything played out, it looks like it might have been planned. You know what I'm saying? In terms and it's just IQ planning. You know what I'm saying? And I I had nothing wrong with that. But part of the plan is maybe, you know, especially with the capital thing happening, maybe, you know, stuff happened. I don't know. But he said he was dealing with things in his personal life and we're not privy to that. And we shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't be. But at the end of the day, you know, he's going through things and he's doing things on his, at his own merit. And I, when a guy is walking the talk that's bigger than basketball, I'll never knock that guy for doing anything in, 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 you know, that's relative towards that or in relation to that. You know what I'm saying? I'll never knock that. Obviously, I understand people are like, he's got to play. He's got to play. He's got to play. He's getting paid on whatever the case is. He lost money in that. He was okay sacrificing that bread. 
He even said, take that bread and go, you know, put it to the, those homes, you know, the communities that need it. Take that bread. Like, this man is really, like, literally paying NBA, WNBA salaries. Like, come on now, man. He's putting his money where his mouth is. And mans don't do that. Mans take theirs and it's just their family and that's it. So this man's been doing the walk. It's not, it's not no game out here. Like, he's actually doing it. So I'm never going to question that guy's, you know, mindset or thought process or whether he should play or not. Like, it's bigger than basketball at that point, especially during this era Dur or during what's happening now and everything that's happening. So, you know, maybe before I might have been like, yo, come on now. Like, you can't miss a game, though. And he probably wouldn't have before. But that, now what's what's happening? Like, you know, so sometimes, you know, you know, if that shit ain't saged, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, what I mean, you got to turn you got to turn the page. You feel me? Like. Come on now, get out the way, you feel me? And take a break, you feel me? Sometimes then come back and relax. And he's going to be eating, you know, he's going to be full because he ate, you feel me? Because we got bars on deck always. So at the end of the day, I just appreciate, you know, the fact that y'all, especially some of y'all who've been saying, you know, I actually gain IQ from just watching your videos and this and that and this and the third, like those, those comments I love to see, man. Like, yeah, those, that actually brings, you know, a smile to the man them face. You feel me? <laughs> it brings a smile because I'm like, yo, mans are actually like anytime somebody doesn't have, you know, IQ and I don't roast the people that don't have IQ or that ask questions or whatever the case is like, we're not always going to have IQ with everything. You know what I mean? There's things that I don't have IQ in, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to this sport, I have IQ in. Like I'm not, I'm not, bro. I breathe, I breathe, eat and sleep basketball since I was a pit me. So that was pinch. You know what I'm saying? My goodness. Bruh. At the end of the day, man. So I have IQ. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know everything in the sport, obviously. But I know a majority. It's like 95%. I'll even say maybe more. But at the end of the day, like, I, you know, I there's things I could learn too. And there's things I would say that obviously is going to be cap at the, or is going to be sound elite. And then it doesn't pan out. And I was wrong or whatever. Like, I don't know everything. I'm not a fortune teller, man. God damn. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, the breakdown of what happens, you know what I'm saying? The breakdown and the IQ and just, you know, breaking things down and seeing what elite looks like. I'm always know. And the fact that y'all, you know, some of y'all weren't, you know, seeing the game with that kind of eye. And then now y'all see the game with that eye. You'll appreciate and like you'll appreciate the when you're able to appreciate the little things and you're pre able to appreciate like and your IQ is high. So, you know what certain things mean now and how elite certain things are. You'll have a whole different respect for the game and just the game in itself and just for moves and plays and all that type of stuff. And the fact that a lot of y'all or some of y'all are able to now change your eye from that because everything's a perspective. Your eye was just seeing dunk, 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 and just whatever. Oh my God, just bucket. You, but now you're actually understanding what's going on that. And now pre, you appreciate it more. That's, that's one of the main reasons, you know, I even started doing that's where the passion comes from. You know what I mean? That's where the passion comes from. So the fact that some of y'all and I, uh, my boy, I forgot your name. Damn, man, I should shout you out. But you know, I'm talking about the guy in the last video that said, you know, he appreciated it. I, you know, uh, I should get your name. Hold up real quick. Let me just come here real quick, man. I can see you real quick. Give me a second here, my guy. I got to give you a shout out. You feel me? Because, you know, seeing stuff like that is always what elite looks like at the end of the day. So, you know what I mean? Uh, let me give this guy real quick a shout out. Uh, bro, let me see here, man. My fault, my fault. Give me one second. Let me scroll down. Uh, is it this guy right here? Yo, yeah, D Vils, D Vils. Is that Vils? Yeah, D Vils. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. I gave what you're my first shout out, basically. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that even more often. I'm gonna start shouting y'all out in the comment sections that you know that show what elite looks like. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm gonna start shouting some of y'all out. You know what I mean? But that, you know that I appreciate you for that comment, man, stuff like that. I like seeing that if y'all have that experience, tell me more, you know what I'm saying? So I could interact with y'all at the end of the day, comment what you think, comment your questions again, share the videos. You know what I'm saying? Get it out there. We had higher views, you know what I mean? But we're getting back. I know a lot of it, especially with this pandemic has changed a lot of these things. You know what I'm saying? People don't even, a lot of people aren't, actually even watching the games as much, you know, they're doing stuff, you know, I don't know what's going on, but at the end of the day, you know, it's going to come a time where especially playoff time. And as we get more integrated and all that type of stuff, you're going to see that the traffic will get more and more and more. So I just need y'all, you know, y'all who are the day ones, you know what I mean? From day one, you feel me? <laughs> 
my goodness, uh, you know, share that, share the, share these videos, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend, all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Share, like, and subscribe, click that notification button. So, you know, when I'm here, cause I'm here, you feel me, you get what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, this is what elite looks like. And just getting that IQ out and everything like that. And if y'all even have IQ before I even say anything, y'all just, you can tell me in the comment section, cause I can learn from y'all as well too. Appreciate y'all. You already know. Share, like, and subscribe. Like I said, it's true talks. Cause true talks, man. We out here. There's no doubt here. And there's no drought here. Come on. You feel me? My goodness. The Nets play today. Kyrie is going to resume, you know, and come back today versus the Cavs. So we'll see if he's in his bag. That's all I ask. You feel me? My goodness, yo. Bruh. I'm amped, man. I'm amped. I was always amped for just K Kyrie and KD. You know, I was amped for that. But now this, bruh. <laughs> yo. Y'all in for a rude awakening, man. Y'all in for a rude awakening at the end of the day, man. I appreciate y'all. You already know. <sighs> Gotta love it. And I'm out, man.